Oi oi oi, what's up? The day that I'm recording this is the 20th birthday of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets PC game. Congratulations! Which as we all know, is my favourite Harry Potter game. Because it's really good. Meanwhile, the newest Wizarding World game, Hogwarts Legacy, should be coming out in a few months now, February, hopefully? And they've just released a really long gameplay video. Now, I was skipping through it a bit earlier and found myself really interested in the aesthetics of the castle, so things like the visuals but also the architecture and the art, so I thought go on, might as well get a little reaction video out of it. Now you should know this is coming from someone who has not studied architecture or art or anything really visual, but I do really like art in general. In fact I did a video talking about the Lumos level which was so rich for its architecture. Please check that out if you haven't. But being a big fan of some of the original games I thought it would be a nice idea to kind of see how it compares I suppose and just see what I think about the new game's visuals. So let's have a little look shall we? So first of all the character creation screen. Now one thing that I think is definitely quite clear that they've gone for here is a more Fantastic Beast style visuals and aesthetics. Like even the outfit here is very kind of Fantastic Beast like the bow tie and the jacket and the waistcoat kind of very Newt Scaramander. The visual style also reminds me a lot of the Lemony Snicket series especially the film. I don't know just the style it kind of very reminds me of that a lot. I don't super know how much I want it in my Harry Potter world but I mean I do like it at least. I'm not like super bothered myself about the character creation but I think it's definitely great that they've enabled people to fully represent themselves in the game which I think is really good and very important. Okay so the first thing we see is the Hufflepuff common room. An interesting choice, but I mean, whatever. The first thing is that it literally just reminds me of Bag End from Lord of the Rings, like Bilbo and Frodo's house, which isn't a bad thing, but that's definitely where it's sending me. So apparently in the book, it was described as having round corridors and doors or something like that, which is definitely what they've gone for here. And I do think it makes sense and looks good. Loving all the wood and the kind of higgledy piggledy bits. The colour is also very nice here, kind of like a mix of pale yellow and golden. Like this is very sort of cosy and homely. Oh my god, the portraits. The portraits move. Oh my god, a cat, the cat that moves. Wow. I really like the windows as well there. They're kind of giving me like canal boats or like small cottages, those kind of windows. And this common room is really nice. I mean, loving the plants, obviously. I guess it makes sense, right? As Professor Sprout, I think, is in Hufflepuff, or she's the head of Hufflepuff, maybe? I like how they mention the music is unique for the Hufflepuff common room, and it's like, uh, yeah, I should hope so. Oh my god, the cactuses jiggle. Loving all the rugs and everything. This is quite big for a common room, like, compared to the one in the film for Gryffindor, right? Do love that they've gone for uh, an earthy vibe, which makes sense, because the badges are under the ground. Yeah, very nice. Love how it just comes out into, like, a wine cellar, which is a completely different vibe. Like, I guess it's still underground, right? But we've got bricks with, like, random damp patches. And then all of a sudden, we're in, like, a completely different visual design. Like, that tapestry is very, very medieval. And even this part of the castle. Ah, so you see on top of the house point hourglasses there. They're kind of like the pinnacles found at the top of the exterior of the Great Hall, which is basically based on like religious buildings, like chapels or churches. There's a great video by, I think, Architectural Digest, where a castle expert examines Hogwarts. And there's an interesting bit where she looks at the exterior and kind of says about how the different pieces of the castle were built over like a few centuries. Some of the more normal square, parts and the keep are a lot older than the more churchy like parts. Even in this room here we've got these gigantic like vaults on the ceiling that kind of descend down and join with the floor which is super impressive. Ah interesting that the windows will change with the year and the seasons that's kind of cool. A lot of the castle in this version of Hogwarts feels a lot more natural. We've got a lot of like tree imagery and roots and things rather than the more typical kind of like medieval visual style we would get. Yes, 
Lovely courtyard, love it. That's why I lost gobstones. I lost. I mean, not that I could have won. Press up to quit, babe. I'm trying. It's interesting what they've done with the exterior of the castle, actually. Because a lot of it is similar or the same as in the film. But a lot of it is also, it does seem to be very different. But I'm absolutely loving all the plants around it. Interesting, when we look down at the greenhouses, we have that same dragon on top of the greenhouse that we had in the PC game of Chamber of Secrets. And maybe the films, I'll double check. Wow. Ooh, nice dragon. Now this central section is a whole mishmash of different styles. So they're describing it as kind of like a big hub with each direction going off to a different place. So there's a lot, there is a lot going on here. So in the middle we have this unicorn and unicorns kind of pop up in medieval tapestry and things a lot. And also it makes sense that they would appear here as they're magical creatures that exist in the wizarding world and in the forbidden forest. But the wooden section behind is definitely giving me more churchy. So a lot of medieval cathedrals in the middle section will have like wooden seats for like bishops and priests and things when they all congregate for mass and this is giving me that. I'll try and come up with some examples. I think Lincoln Cathedral has that kind of vibe and it looks very similar to that. But then on the floor we have these fleur-de-lis and then this side here is like completely different again. So a lot of the visual style here is giving me Charles Rennie Macintosh, this Glaswegian artist uh, who produced kind of most famously windows, um, stained glass windows that had this very distinctive style with thick lines. And I think he went on to inspire Art Nouveau, or was around that time. And a lot of this is is kind of giving me Art Nouveau style as well, like especially these columns with the kind of swirly bits at the bottom. And although it doesn't feel like it matches Hogwarts especially, because this would have been in like the 19th century, I think it definitely helps with the, the visual appeal of making different sections feel different and distinct so that you can find your way around, which is a problem I think I had in like the fifth game and the second one on PS2 because a lot of the sections felt visually very similar and it especially makes sense for a hub world where you need to go to different places so this is an especially good place to have that. Actually interesting what they say about the minimap uh, that it can be removed or altered because I do find in games like this or like The Witcher 3 because it's constantly moving with you although it can kind of tell you where you're going it didn't help me work out kind of where I was in the game in terms of the map but when it let me freeze north to up I found it almost instantly helped me work my way around by looking at the minimap a lot more so I hope they do implement something like that in the game ah yes this courtyard this is um the one in the fifth game where Fred and George teach you the spells right and Malfoy gets the ferret up his trousers uh, who are you Nellie Oxbury um I don't think we're gonna talk to her no I'm Nellie by the way didn't I'm ask but so excited that the Dedalian keys are back the what keys Exactly. Keys. Surely you've seen them flying about. Babe, don't make Dedalian keys a thing, okay? It's not real. This lip syncing, it's um... It's not the best. You should try to catch one. You literally don't tell me what to do? Okay, let's go in here. Oh wow, this section is like completely different again. The amount of marble here, uh, it's a lot. I don't think we really have marble in the UK. Maybe we did at that time Hogwarts was built, but but I mean, again, it makes complete sense to give it a completely different visual style, right? It's kind of giving me um, Gringotts from the PS1 game when you're slipping and sliding about the place. Zenobia Noak. Don't you know who I am? Zenobia. Why would I know who you are? The girl whom everyone at school hates for no reason. Babes with a name like that, I think I know the reason they're picking on you. Everyone hates you. Why? Because Hogwarts is full of bullies. It's just because you're unlikable. Leander Pruitt's one of the worst, that no talent moon mind. No talent moon mind. I'm gonna start using that as an insult. My gobstone collection, that is. Honey, I'm not interested in your gobstone collection, all right? The only gob around here is you, you little gobshite. Okay, bye, bye. Wow, these stained glass windows, again. Kind of Art Nouveau, kind of looks like a children's cartoon, but like, in a nice way. Ah, wow, this is, this is similar, which is nice. Oh my god, the dragon is huge. Look how small it is in the um, Chamber of Secrets PC game. It's tiny in comparison. This is really nice though. I'm glad they've gone for like a similar style for lots of parts of it, but completely different for others. Definitely helps try and blend the two, or at least makes it feel more like Hogwarts. 
I do really like the style of the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom anyway, especially when Lupin took it over, it kind of really gelled. Ew, afternoon tea. More tea, Vicar. As if these children are drinking tea, I'm sorry. This is like, yeah, this is 100% like a bank or like a government building or something. Ooh, no, go back, look at that painting. This painting here is like completely different to like every other painting we've seen in Hogwarts so far. Like most of the paintings in Hogwarts are either like medieval or kind of like um, old masters, kind of like old Dutch masters style. But this is like something else. Those flames are amazing. Kind of reminds me of this postcard I have of a painting from a museum in Glasgow. Let me get it. Okay, I have it here. Like it's not the same, like at all really. But I just really like, wait, why am I showing you this? I can just bring it up on the screen. I just really think it's the arms going like this and also in the painting her scarf sort of blanket thing kind of looks like fire and it's just giving me a similar vibe i don't know it's hard to explain you know it's just like a feeling anyway this painting is anna pavlova painted in 1910 by john lavery what is going on in this look at those sofas yeah let's go up here Ooh. back 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 look at this stained glass window honey Wow, this is like, um, kind of like the green man, like the kind of spiritual figure who kind of represents nature, but it's kind of also giving me that kind of satyr pan devil face carving from the early Harry Potter PC games, this one. And that is of course my favorite texture in all the Harry Potter games. I'll tell you a bit, little bit more about that in a future video. Just gotta wait and see. Ooh, wow. Absolutely loving all the plants around Hogwarts. They're so good. Did Dumbledore let them all die? Even like this bit here is very unusual. Like we've got some like seven sided stars and like almost lightning bolts. Yes. So she's just said about every hall kind of having its own personality, which is, I think is definitely a good choice. Good decision. A whale. Ah, oh, now like this section is almost Tudor. Like the sort of wooden ceilings and the sort of wooden cladding on the walls feels very Judas to me, which again is something we have not seen yet in the game. Like there is so many different styles here. And this is something that is seen in some of the Harry Potter games as well, and I think the films. So even though this isn't medieval by any means, this definitely still also feels like Hogwarts. God, I hope this game's gonna be good. Oh, the Owlery, lovely. No offense, but every time a game says, everything you can see, you can visit. There ain't gonna be nothing there. We've all played Skyrim. We've all been the top of that mountain where there was nothing. Wow, this feels bigger than ever. This is a cool though, this is like, looks more like coppery, kind of like copper that's gone a bit oxidized. I like it. Even like the wall here is so different than anything we've seen before. Punch him, go on. Where's all the Scottish people? It's literally set in Scotland, which is a complaint for every other version of Harry Potter 2, to be honest. Okay, so here we are with the combat. Honestly, I didn't really care about the combat, but I think that's because the most important thing I'm interested in is kind of how it's gonna feel to go around Hogwarts, but I hope to be pleasantly surprised by the combat. Okay, we've got the classic wooden bridge, love it. So the game doesn't crash, ha ha ha. God, they love that Owlery. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's the stones. <laughs> wow. I'm just so wondering what they're gonna literally fill all of that space with, and if it's going to be worth going and investigating. I hope so. Okay, very, very interesting. Personally, I still have no idea how good this game's gonna be. Well, I think it looks amazing. While I wouldn't say I personally love all of the styles that they've gone for, I'm not really a massive fan of the Fantastic Beast style of visuals, but of course it makes sense that they would go for that because that's the most recent kind of part of the Wizarding World. But it looks like they've also gone for a whole bunch of other visual style as well, which I, I do appreciate. And while I don't necessarily think think in my brain it all goes together. Each individual part of it looks very good and I completely understand why they've gone for it. In fact, I'm glad they did because then it, at least it makes it easier to bloody find my way around. I just hope it captures that magic that the old Harry Potter games uh, had because that's what we, that's what we all want in 2022. You know what I mean? 20 years after the Chamber of Secrets game, babes, better bring it. If you haven't done so already, please check out my other Harry Potter videos. There's a lot of them now. I want to say thank you to all of my Patreon patrons for supporting me for so long. I really appreciate it. Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold as well. If you couldn't tell by my weird voice. If you're interested in helping support the channel, there's some links down below. 
a little bit of a sneak peek, but I am getting some merch made, so keep an eye out for that. Hopefully it won't take too long, but I'd be super interested to hear what some of your thoughts on the visuals are and on the gameplay itself as well, of course. So do please leave comments down below with some of your thoughts on it. February can't come soon enough. I just want to know if it's going to be any good. But as usual, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.